Yes. Come on, look at somebody say, living, living beyond, beyond the wall. The wall. Oh, how many of you have walls in your life? How many of you have built up a wall in your life? Come on. I know you have. Hallelujah. There's walls of hatred. There are walls of bitterness. But there's also walls of discontentment. Hallelujah. How many of you know what the word enmity means? Enmity is written in the Bible. Enmity even means hatred. Hallelujah. Some people build up walls just because they don't like you. Hallelujah. Because of the color of your skin. Hallelujah. Because they don't agree with you. Walls start to come up. Hallelujah. Yes. How many of you know this building was actually a floor place? Yes. Everything in it was flat. And then we put up the walls. Mm -hmm. Those are called partial walls because they are not connected to the foundation. When your foundation is already established, hallelujah, when you build walls, you either keep people out and you keep people from coming in. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, yes. That's what walls are for. But in our lives, hallelujah, we got to know who is the one who has already torn down every wall in our lives. Yes. Come on, go with me over to Joshua real quick. I know you've heard of this before. Mm -hmm. Come on, I won't be long. Look at them by say he won't be long. He won't be long. He won't be long. How long is long? <laughs> Joshua chapter 6, hallelujah. Come on, just bear with me a moment, hallelujah, to catch this word, hallelujah. You really got to catch it because, see, walls have been developed around us, hallelujah, around our heart and let, not let God come in and not let the Holy Spirit come out. Now, Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 reads as thus. It says, now Jericho was straightly shut up. Come on, say straightly shut up. Straight Straight shut up. Up. What does that mean? Nobody could come in and nobody could get out. And this would happen when we build walls. Nobody can get in, nobody, nobody can get out. Straightly shut up because of the children. There was none went out, none came in. Go down to verse 10 for me, please, real quickly. And Joshua commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout. Nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid shout, then shall you shout. And we know that the people had to be obedient to what he said, what Joshua said. In the midst of going through stuff, how many of you can be quiet when you're going through? Can you imagine walking around the wall but not saying one word? Can you imagine your situation you're going through that you say not one word? Because the commandment has already been given that you don't say one word till I tell you to shout. That's the hardest part for some of us, especially people who like to talk. To march around the wall and not say anything. Then yeah. let God begin to work on your behalf in the midst of bringing it down. To be quiet when things and trouble is all around you. When things have come against you. Hallelujah. How many can be quiet and, and let God speak to you with that still small voice and give you direction? Say, not right now. Not right now. That I'll be your victor. How many of you take the posture, hallelujah, a victorious posture, hallelujah, knowing that and agreeing that in advance that I'm going to get the victory in advance anyway because I let the Lord fight my battles. Amen. See, sometimes we need to just be quiet because we can get ourselves out of position by the words that we say because how many of you know words have power? See, words have power. When you sit up there and say, I'm sick, hallelujah, and you're speaking some things, oh, come on, I'm just being honest with you, hallelujah. Speaking, when you say, I'm sick, you're speaking that upon yourself, hallelujah. And some people say, well, why do you say all is well, Henry? I say, because all is well. No matter how this body feels, all is well, hallelujah. No, I'm not going to say I'm sick. I'm not going to say I'm not feeling well, hallelujah. Though it may be present, hallelujah, I don't have to say it. Because my victory comes when I say I'm whole, mm. I'm healthy. Mm. I start speaking it and let it begin to work in the atmosphere. I can't walk. I don't need a wheelchair no more. 
I don't need a walker no more. You start encouraging yourself that I'm going to get up out of here, pick up your bell, rise up and walk, hallelujah. You begin talking to yourself. You begin, hallelujah, just encouraging yourself. As David said, hallelujah, open first Samuel, when everything was taken away, well, even his wives, hallelujah, somebody said he had to begin to encourage himself. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself when you're going through. Not to begin to talk, to shout, hallelujah, until God says it's time, hallelujah, that's when you begin to break out with the shot. But in the midst, you're trusting God. We talked about this last week. Trusting in the process. Can we trust God to fix it? Hallelujah. As for me and my house, come on, it's our favorite term, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will trust the Lord that he will fix it. Hallelujah. This was ever wrong. Hallelujah. God is going to fix it for me. Hallelujah. Whatever I'm going through, hallelujah, it could be just that God wants me to go through. Because how many of you know God sends you into darkness? I heard a man say that today, and it struck it to my spirit, that God actually sends us into darkness for us to be light. And we complain about God, why are you sending me there? Why are you putting me over here? Why am I on the job? Why you got me in San Antonio? Why you got me over there? Come. We begin to question all those things, but God may be just sending you there to be the light unto the people that are there. Oh, my Amen. God. Right. Oh, many won't agree that God will send you into darkness. Amen. But he said, be light. As the man was said, he said, we are the salt of the earth. Why do we always want to hang out with salt? Why we can't sprinkle what we got out there in there with people who actually need it? We want to be salt to each other. And don't want to go into the dark places that God has already set up for us, hallelujah, that you can become what God has already called you to be. You may be silenced in that darkness. But we have to learn how to obey. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on, one last verse of Joshua. Go down to verse 20. It said, after all that, verse 20 says, so the people shouted, when the priest blew the horn, mm -hmm. blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sounds of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Was it the shout that made the wall fall down? No, it was their obedience for six days. They didn't say a word. But on the seventh day, when they were told to shout, when you're obedient, hallelujah, your walls will come down flat. The ones you have built up in your heart, hallelujah, when you begin to shout when God tells you to, they'll go lay down flat. See, because we have built up barriers in our life, barriers that keep us. Come on. We can talk about it. Barriers sometimes become excuses, hallelujah, as to why we can't do something. We build our own barriers. See, it's like this, okay? And you might, this is my one-on-one -on -one for you today, because we think that division comes from walls. Who builds those walls? People build those walls. Division does not come from God. That means that somebody is building a wall of division. That's where it comes from. Because God does not build division. Because Christ is the one who brings down every wall and brings us to a common ground. He begins to lay things flat so that we all can come. Greek or Jew, hallelujah. It doesn't matter that we all can come to Christ the same way. What about Trump? You're going to break 45. He needs God too, hallelujah. Amen, he sure do. We all need God, especially these last days, hallelujah. But as you can see, hallelujah, the wall fell flat so that the people went up into the city and every man straight before him and they took the city. We 
become overcomers, hallelujah, by the words of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah. And we can actually begin to be obedient to Christ, hallelujah, because it wasn't in the shout, y'all. It was in their obedience up until the shout. Sometimes we have to be obedient before we can shout, hallelujah. We see a lot of people who can display, hallelujah, a shout, hallelujah, who can display a dance, hallelujah. But it is, it is, is it what God has called it to be? Has God called you to shout right now? Mm. See, because men are set when God told them to shout. When they're supposed to be shouting, they're sitting. When they're sitting, they should have been shouting. Until we begin to let God speak into our lives, hallelujah. We begin to live through the process because we're all going through the process right now. The process may not be easy to you because it comes harder when we begin to build walls which causes us to be divided, which causes us to be separated from Christ. That's the greatest wall you can build. It's like when they talked about uh, sin, see, sin and judgment, hallelujah. God said, there's some sins that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But there's judgment for all. There's some things I don't like, mm -hmm. but there's judgment for all. When we build a wall, we don't let out the Holy Spirit that's within us. Mm. Amen. Especially yeah. when we build walls on the inside. Yeah. We don't let love out because we built the wall that won't let love out. Mm -hmm. We leave a little gate well, we can open the gate and let love out a little bit at a time. Because I got to watch that joke over there. I got to watch that person over there. When God never intended for you to have a wall when it comes to what's on the inside. The Holy Spirit, the love that he's put inside of you. He wants it to flow out of you to make the connection with all. For the kingdom of God is at hand. All he told you to do is repent. Which means the kingdom is already here. It's right at your hand. If we would just allow God to speak to in our lives, if we go through this process, learn to live through the process. Living is an action. It's a total being. It's a constant thing. It's consistency. It's continuous. If we continue to live for Christ, hallelujah, it's consistency. I know that's a hard word for most people. To do things consistency. Because if you do it consistently, you have to commit to it. Amen. If we will commit to God, and I just want to encourage you to commit to God, to live through this process that God has already set up. There's some places that you're going to go that God, hallelujah, is sending you to. Not that the enemy has called you to go to, but God is actually sending you to, to be light in the midst of darkness. That job you own may be just for you there, because somebody needs to see God. Amen. God might want to just speak to one person in there, but that's your assignment. Praise Jesus. See, your destiny is planned. It's yours. It belongs to you and no one else. Only you can achieve it. No one else can take you there. You must learn to trust God's guidance and his leading on the road to your purpose. Hmm. Amen. How many of you know your purpose? Come on now. Hmm. See God's presence. And not that you wouldn't have to do the necessary work in the preparation process, uh -huh. but God's presence makes his process even easier. Amen. Amen. He makes living for him even easier. Because here we go, we sometimes lose focus because we haven't heard from God. Could it be that we built a barrier up yep. that won't let the voice of God come through? Yep. That it could also mean it won't let our voices go out. So is God really hearing us? Mm -hmm. If we build a barrier mm -hmm. where love won't begin to flow, so how can we say we love someone mm -hmm. if we build a wall up? Divisions of walls are built by people. Yes. Come on now. Amen. And we are the people of God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Okay, that was my introduction. Let's go to the word. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at the 11th verse. Uh huh. Come on. Wherefore, remember. Remember. That ye being in time past, mm -hmm. Gentiles in the flesh. In the flesh. Who are called uncircumcision mm -hmm. by that which is called. 
all circumcision mm -hmm. in the flesh made by hand. Remember that we were barriers from God. We were separated from God. We were actually working for the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like to say the wages of sin is death. Somebody got to be working in order for there to be wages. Come on, we had a good resume. I don't know about you. Let me talk about me then. I had a good resume with him. Hallelujah. They know me everywhere I went. I was loud out in the world. That's why I'm loud now. I was loud out there. I was the first one in the club. I got my hair fixed up and got all dressed up to go to the club. Oh, y'all ain't never. Don't look at me like y'all ain't never been to the club. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I was all dressed up, shoot. Saturday, I was preparing for that night. Hallelujah. Friday night, I was getting ready to what? What I'm gonna wear, what I'm gonna put on, and I'm gonna go out there looking good. Amen. Be clean, you know. But why does it when it comes to church, we don't practice the same thing? Somebody said, well, I don't need all that. No, God doesn't look at the hour. He has nothing to do with what you got on the outside. You can fix your hair up, you can do all the other things you want to do, put up on all the stuff you want to, but God ain't even looking at that. Not like when you go to the club, you know, because you want all the people to see you. Amen. That's the way it was for me, you know. I, when I break in, I want everybody to know who I am. If I can change the atmosphere in the club, why I can't change it in the church? Huh. Uh -huh. Why I can't change it wherever I go? Why I can't be different? Why we don't prepare to be better people for God? Why don't we fix up, hallelujah, instead of going to the gym? Okay, I ain't going to leave the gym alone. Yeah, I'm not gym I like the gym, too. Go, go. I hate what I have to do in the gym, but I like the outcome. Amen. All right, come on, read for me. Verse 12, that, at that time you were without Christ, mm -hmm. being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, mm -hmm. having no hope and without God in the world. So you was at a place that you were without God. Even call you aliens. Uh -oh. That's what the word said. That means that we were had, really didn't even have a relationship with God. Because we were doing our own thing. Yeah. Somehow we even fell back to doing it anyway. When you become self-absorbed, when sin enters in, it brings forth death. Yeah. Death is a separation from God. It causes us not to be able to live in the process because we're separated by a wall that is called division, which we have set up because we have allowed sin to become that wall mm -hmm. that keeps us from God, mm -hmm. keeps us from hearing. Come on, read. Right, read fast. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. By what? By the blood of Christ. By the blood. The blood is what draws you near to Christ. What draws you in. That's why he can say, no man come to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. When you, hallelujah, may be brought near by the blood. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you were looking way off. Yes. Looked like you weren't going to make it. But God had a plan already. Mm -hmm. A plan in place. <clears throat> he had a purpose for you from the beginning. And just because you had a little struggles along the way doesn't mean that he won't complete it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. Faultless. Go over to Jude. he tell you all about it. Present us faultless. Hallelujah. Before a true and living God. Come on. Come on. Read that. Verse 14. For he is our peace. Peace. Who has made both one and have broken down the metal wall of partition between us. Uh oh, you got to read that one over there. He broke down what? He broke down the middle wall mm -hmm. of partition between us. For he is our peace, hallelujah, who has made both one and has broken down the separation wall. Mm -hmm. See, back then, he was talk Paul was talking to the Ephesians about Jews and Gentiles. Because that seemed to be the main thing, especially when they were coming, hallelujah, that the Jews didn't like the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But Christ said, I came to tear down the center wall, the one that's right there in the middle. I come to tear it down that all may come to Christ, that every barrier.
barrier, I'm going to take it down right now. I'm taking down every barrier by dying on this cross. Hallelujah. Because I'm paying the price for you that you may have a relationship with God. I'm tearing down the center wall. Jesus. So that we no longer have to have barriers between us. Not for me. Christ was saying not for me. I already have a relationship. I want to have a relationship with everyone. The same way in our lives. We've got to tear down some walls that keep us from having healthy relationships. Amen. Because we're the ones who build the walls up. You know who part of the wall is? Feelings. When our feelings get hurt, phew, the wall goes up. What if Christ had dealt with us from a feeling perspective? To not say, hey, I ain't got to go to the cross. I ain't got to let them nail no, no holes in my hands and no feet, in my feet. I don't have to. If you want to base it off the perspective of feeling, that's going to hurt. But he said, for the people's sake, to bring them back to relationship with, with God. That's how he, through, through all of that, came to scripture, you're not of your own. For you were bought with a price. The blood of Jesus Christ. See, because he is the peacemaker. That's why he tells you, live peaceably with all men. That I means get along with all people. Peace means just getting along. Can we all just get along? Yeah. Can we all just go together, hallelujah, and fight the works of the enemy, hallelujah? Yeah. Can we recognize, hallelujah, when the enemy has attached itself, one of his demons to one of somebody, and caused them to act indifferent? Mm. Jesus. And know when God is lining us up for his purpose? Jesus, Jesus. We've got to quit letting people control what is happening in our lives. Jesus. Help us today, God. Look through the kingdom microscope and see that God has a purpose and a plan for it all. Come on, read fast. 15, heaven abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Mm -hmm. For to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Here you see the word enmity used twice in those two verses. Mm -hmm. What does enmity mean? Hatred is one definition of it. Mm -hmm. Enmity, when we allow our feelings to be built to, to a place where we can actually label it. As hatred, label it as dislike, label it as jealousy, label it as envy, label it as strife. When we begin to label our feelings, hallelujah, it begin to rise up in us. God said, I came that there will be no more enmity. None. Mm -hmm. None. For there shall be peace. Peace. For he's creating in us a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All oh. things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Quit living in the old, in the past. God has created us a new creature, hallelujah. Come on, we got to have the transformation process. Yes. Because restoration is a process. Yes. But reconciliation and recreation is not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Restoration and reconciliation yes. are not the same thing. Yes, Jesus. For the price has been paid to restore us. Mm -hmm. Back in right relationship yes. with God. You didn't do it yourself. Mm. Even though we want to get credit to yourself. There was a drawing for you that was, had already been taking place on the cross. That the day that you came, when you were far off, he brought you near. Yeah. Yeah. And now we all have, all have a common way to be near to God mm. through the cross. Through Jesus Christ, uh -huh. who has torn down the middle wall 
Now we have to learn how to live. To live beyond the wall that's already been torn down. God has torn down walls in your life. Yet we still like to reconstruct them. Brick by brick. We like to build them back up again. Hallelujah. When God has delivered you from something, we want to build that back up again. We want to go right back to it. Hallelujah. Build that wall again. Hallelujah. When God has said, I already built it, tore it down. Why are you rebuilding something? Yes. But yet you want restoration. Out of the rebuilding of a wall and within your own self, you want restoration. Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay, hold on. oh, my God, my God. Tell it, tell it. Mm. But in the midst of it all, uh -huh. when we were far around, when we were separated from God, Christ came to bring us near to God, to bring us peace, to bring us reconciliation, to bring us access to God. Mm. But when people have made up their own mind, hallelujah, to do their own thing, when the Jews want to hate the Jew Gentiles, when you want to get away from the Samaritans, mm. don't want to be nowhere around them because they was a mixed breed. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I think Jesus covered it all. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Especially when it comes to those, hallelujah, of different nationalities, of different ethnic backgrounds. Jesus crossed every last one of them. Yes, he did. So you can no longer have enmity between you, even between yourselves. God is trying to bring us to a place where we at least have peace, where we can at least get along with one another. Let him be the center, hallelujah. Let him be the one who can tear down the walls in your life, hallelujah. When you think you can't get along with somebody, yes, it can be done if you let Christ be the center. We sing that song, Jesus be the center of my life. If we allow him into the center of our lives, you can't have nothing but improvement. Because when you allow the image in the flesh to rise up, it will definitely begin to take over. Absolutely. But it can't take control unless you allow it. Mm. Amen. Yes. Because the Holy Spirit, we, we have built the barrier from all the talk and all the teaching of that the Holy Spirit is not a person, that the Holy Spirit is not there, huh? and you need to speak in tongues before you can have the Holy Spirit. We would, have, we would have gave it all kinds of things that have caused us to build up a wall that have caused not to let the Holy Spirit that's within us become, let him out. Let him out, let him out through the love. Let him out, hallelujah, through all of the peace, hallelujah, the companionship, the admiration of one another. Let him out. Hmm. Let him be the common ground. Okay, go ahead. Mm, Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus, Finish Jesus. that up for me real quick. I got three minutes. Uh, verse 17. Uh -huh. And came and preached peace to you, mm -hmm. which were for all, and to them that were not. Mm -hmm. but, though, but through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We have access. So by the tearing down of the wall, it gives us access to God. Access on a daily basis where we can actually begin to communicate with God through prayer. Communication, not just talking, but also listening. Access to God, hallelujah. Who that even when you were in your sins, he loved you anyway. He saw you at where you are today. Uh -huh. Even when you couldn't see yourself. Hmm. Hmm. But there's that word again, peace. peace. Amen. See, Paul writes, Jesus is our peace. Mm -hmm. yes. He made peace. He came and preached peace. But peace just can mean the absence of war. Mm -hmm. The war that we have on the inside. As we war with ourselves to be better persons in our lives. The war is on. But we have to know who the center is. Who has torn down the petition that we may go forth living as living epistles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going forth in God, hallelujah, doing the work that he's called. See, living is a process. 